Hello, I'm Pastor Lance Carithers, and it is so good to be with you again on Woodlawn Without Walls. This is the online worship experience for Woodlawn United Methodist Church in Derby, Kansas. Uh, we're so glad that you are with us. This service is designed especially for those who are unable to join us in person for worship on Sunday mornings, as well as for those who may be searching for a church home. You can always go to our website at woodlawnumc.net to find out more information about our church, upcoming events, uh, ministries. You can also watch previous episodes of Woodlawn Without Walls. Your contributions are so helpful to continue this ministry. And if you would like to help support it financially, uh, you can do so in one of a couple of ways. You can give online at woodlawnumc.net. Just click the giving tab at the top of the website. Or you can always mail your contribution to Woodlawn United Methodist Church, 431 South Woodlawn Boulevard, Derby, Kansas. Thank you uh, to each of you who support this ministry. Let's begin our worship today by centering in um, before a merciful God with our call to worship. The Lord is our refuge, the Most High our dwelling place. No evil shall come our way. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, for he will protect those who know his name. And when they call, he will answer them. Jesus says, I will rescue and honor them and show them my salvation. Thanks be to our Lord Jesus Christ, whose name is ever praised. Thank you. 
What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to come to God in prayer. Will you join me in this time of prayer this morning? Oh God of life, you ask us to listen, to listen to what gives life, which which may not be easy when our culture offers so many messages which lead to dead ends. <laughs> we are drained, our energy stolen, we are left lifeless, our spirits emptied. But it is then that you call to us, O oh God, and oh how precious to hear our names from your lips. You call us to come out, to be fed and filled, and then enter in through your Son for protection and peace from any thief or enemy that waits in the dark. For you and you alone, God, lift our spirits. You satisfy our souls. You give us lasting peace and fill us with life in the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thankful for your protection, your sustenance. We lift others to you who are in need of your divine strength, your healing, your comfort, your grace, and your peace. Those who are in need of life, life that is full, life abundant, life promised by your Son, Jesus. By your hand, may those that we love and lift today be filled with life, be nourished in the pastures where you lead, that they may drink from the still waters that you provide. Oh God, bring life to the sick and the injured, those convalescing and recovering, those fighting and battling to conquer the enemy of death. Bring life to those who grieve and to those who despair. And let us hear your voice draw us to the pathways of life that others may see us as a safe gateway leading to the abundant life of your Son. All these things we pray in the name of the one who is the gate of life. As we pray the prayer that he taught saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In this Lenten Sunday series, we are reflecting together in worship uh, on the seven times that Jesus uses the phrase, I am, as a way of defining himself and his mission. In previous weeks, we explored Jesus's revelation that I am the light of the world and I am the bread of life. And these two statements have already introduced some contrasting themes that we hear again and again in the Gospel of John. Light versus darkness, where the light allows one to see and believe in Jesus as the one sent from God. Those in the dark cannot see or refuse to see. They are spiritually blind. And of course, there are the contrasting understandings of life itself, physical life that ends, and spiritual life which is eternal. This week in John 10, 1 to 10, Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. Listen for how this simple statement echoes many of those same themes. 
I'm going to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. You know, a, a well-crafted metaphor uses consistent imagery. You know, when someone says, you really hit the nail on the head, so to speak, right? But when you start mixing those images, you really hit the nail on the nose. <laughs> you can create a type of malapropism that is known as a mixed metaphor. I, I have this friend who, when things seem easy or simple for him, he often says, well, it's not rocket surgery. <laughs> I always want to correct him. I always want to say, no, no, no. Either you mean it's not rocket science, or you mean it's not brain surgery, to which my friend will say, well, it's not rocket surgery either. <laughs> no, no, it's sure not. Here in the 10th chapter of John, Jesus appears to mix metaphors, which sometimes can make this short passage uh, a little bit difficult to follow. Jesus at first seems to be talking of himself as a shepherd whose voice is familiar to those who know him, and they follow the shepherd to the pasture. There's a gatekeeper that opens a gate so that the shepherd can call to his sheep, and they come out and follow him. But then Jesus switches it up, and he says instead, I am the gate. The gate? I am the gate. All who enter by me will be saved. They will come in, they will go out and find pasture. I have come so that they, the sheep, will have life and have it abundantly. Then, in the very next verse, which I didn't read just now, Jesus will switch back again and he will say, I am the good shepherd, returning once again to that first metaphor. Well, which is it? Is Jesus a gate? Or is Jesus a shepherd? Or is Jesus both? What's up? Well, first off, let me promise you that we will talk more about Jesus as the good shepherd next week. But this week, we're going to stay focused on the first 10 verses of chapter 10 in John's Gospel and Jesus' proclamation that he is, in fact, the gate for the sheep. Now, a gate functions to connect two sides, right? Here in Jesus' words, this gate opens and closes between what is the outside pasture and the inside pen, or sheepfold. At night, sheep were often brought into a, a holding pen to keep the flock together in a fairly tight area so that at night they could be watched and they could be defended against predators. This pen was called a sheepfold. The gate 
swings open to allow the sheep to enter into the sheepfold at night. And then in the morning, in the light of day, the gate swings open once again to allow the sheep to go out and follow the voice of their shepherd to the pasture. In this way, the gate is necessary to ensure the life of the sheep. It is what allows them to be protected at night so they will not perish, and it is what opens to allow them out so that they can graze and get food in the day. Jesus says, I am that gate, indicating that those who enter in through him will be safe in the darkness, as well as called out each morning for provision, grass, water, the things that bring life for a sheep. You see, life is always what awaits on the other side of the gate, on both sides of the gate. I came that they may have life, Jesus says, and that they may have life abundantly. Now, I'm going to stop there for a moment. I want us to recall the symbols that we've already explored in the first two weeks of this series where Jesus said, I am the light of the world and I am the bread of life. Do, do you hear the echoes of those statements in today's text? Remember, light and darkness, thieves and bandits, they come at night. The shepherd comes when? Right? in the light of day, to provide for them what they need to eat every day, the bread of life for a sheep. Provision for the body and for the spirit as well, for all of eternity, an abundance of life that is more than just life. Today, the sheep are led daily to pasture. It's a metaphor not only for the daily food that is required for their bodies, but they are led out to abundant life, spiritual life, promised to those who enter and go out through the gate. Well, that gives us a pretty clear picture of the metaphor, the gate, how it is an instrument of life, right? But we haven't discussed anything at all about why Jesus is talking about this, and to whom is he speaking? Chapter 10 begins, we might assume that Jesus is simply talking to his followers, giving them some comforting words, some assurance that he's going to look after them, that he's going to protect them from thieves and bandits, that he is going to provide for them life, abundant life, if they know him and follow him his voice. That's the way I've always heard this passage. Words of comfort for those who follow Jesus, trust Jesus. But Jesus isn't talking to his disciples here, or even crowds that have been following him. No, no, no. He is addressing a group of Pharisees. Religious authorities of the synagogue. It's, it's the Pharisees to whom he directs his comments, I am the gate. I have come that they might have life and life abundant. Hear that? They might have life. Not you might have life. That they might have life and life abundantly. His followers aren't the ones being addressed. In fact, the preceding chapter in John's Gospel, chapter 9, indicates that Jesus is speaking not just to Pharisees, but a particular group of Pharisees whose actions Jesus calls into question. At the beginning of the previous chapter, chapter 9, Jesus heals a man who's been blind from birth. Again, hear the contrast between sight and blindness, light and darkness. Well, when the Pharisees see the man that they've always known to be blind, now fully sighted, they ask him how it is that he received his sight. And he says, there is this person, 
named Jesus, who put mud on his eyes and told him to go and wash. And when he washed, he could see. They asked the man to identify this Jesus. And well, he cannot because Jesus had moved on by the time the man had washed and received his sight. The Pharisees are skeptical. They even threaten the man's parents to try to make them tell him where they can find this Jesus. Then they haul the healed man in for a second time for questioning. Finally, they expel the healed man from the religious community because the Pharisees refuse to see, that is, they refuse to recognize Jesus and his act of healing as coming from God. You see, rather than the man's well-being, his life, the Pharisees are more concerned about guarding their power and authority. They are the gatekeepers, after all, of the true religion, the gatekeepers of the synagogue. And so they put the man out and bar him from the community. Now, all of this, all of this happens in the chapter immediately before Jesus is talking about sheep and sheepfolds and gates and so on. Now, I think it's also important to know the Pharisees in those days, they were the experts in the law. They were the religious authorities of the synagogue. And, and it was their duty to care for and protect and guide the people of Israel with the law of Moses. Figuratively, you could say they were the shepherds of Israel. Hmm? Well, at the close of chapter 9, Jesus finds the healed man again after he's been expelled, put out of the synagogue. And Jesus invites the man to follow him, to come into a new community, to enter into a community made up of his followers. And then Jesus says to the healed man, For I came into the world so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Well, apparently the Pharisees are hanging around close enough to overhear what Jesus says to the man. And immediately they become defensive. We're not blind, are we? They say. And from this question, from this point forward, the final sentence of chapter 9, following into chapter 10, Jesus now is speaking to the Pharisees directly. And he says to them at the very tail end of chapter 9, If you were blind, you wouldn't be in sin. But since you insist that you can see, well, it's pretty clear. Your sin remains. And then, starting in chapter 10, he begins talking about sheep. A sheepfold. And the gate of the sheepfold. As Jesus begins speaking, there appears to be a shepherd whom the sheep know and follow, who always has the sheep's best interests at heart. And there is this gatekeeper who opens and shuts the gate to always make sure that the sheep are safe and protected in the sheepfold at night. But not everyone who hangs around the sheepfold are concerned for the sheep's well-being. Because at night, there are thieves and bandits, predators, intent on death and destruction. With the sheep secure in the sheepfold, the gate closes and protects them in the darkness. So that in the light of day, they will be free to follow their shepherd to pasture where they will be cared for and provided for and fed. Until it's time when the sun begins to set when they will return to the sheepfold and enter in through the gate. And the gate will close and not let the thieves and the bandits 
and the predators get to them. Now then, this is when Jesus looks at the Pharisees, and I can almost, I can almost hear the challenge in his voice, the stern warning that he is directing directly at them when he says, I am the gate. Got it? I am the gate, and I will protect my precious ones from you. You will not steal their life. For I have come that they may have life and have life abundantly. I doubt the Pharisees would have missed the point. But just in case, Jesus continues on in verse 11 telling those Pharisees, those supposed shepherds of Israel, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. But now that's a whole nother sermon. And we'll take that up next week beginning at the 11th verse of John chapter 10. <laughs> Receive this blessing. Holy God, we are, we are blessed by the one who protects us, who provides for us, sent by your grace that we might have abundant life, always through your Son, Jesus. With grateful hearts we pray, thanks be to God.